Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to focus on a different department, roles and responsibilities. And today we are very pleased that Jean Gallimore has joined us. Welcome, Jean. Thank you. Good to be here. Jean's been our HR Director now going on four years and has done a remarkable job, built, I think, the strongest team we've ever had in our HR department and today we're going to learn a little bit more about the roles and responsibilities functions of that important department so please begin by sharing just a little bit about yourself because you and your family have been community leaders and have made good things happen here and why don't you set the stage just sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself personally sure thank you uh, born and raised in Sheboygan so Sheboygan County is certainly near and dear to my heart as well as my family uh, we have currently raised three boys, uh, two young adults and one still in high school. So uh, it's all about sports and, and uh, community. Uh, and my husband and I a few years ago did co-chair the United Way campaign here in Sheboygan, uh, which was really an enlightening experience uh, for us, certainly respected the United Way uh, for many years, uh, but playing a key role certainly opened our eyes as a family uh, and understanding what a great community we live in here in Sheboygan County. And that's how we met. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You and Jim did a tremendous job. Jim continues to serve on the United Way board with myself, but uh, it is a remarkable organization. You guys did a tremendous job. Well, we're pleased to have you here. Set the stage. Share a little bit about the primary roles and responsibilities of the Human Resources Department. Okay, certainly. Uh, I think one of really my personal goals as an HR leader is to make sure that the HR practices and policies align very well with the organizational goals, in this case the county's goals. So we want to be that strategic partner at the table just like any other department. I think our slant certainly and our focus is on the people management, our people, our employees here at the county. Uh, so that's near and dear to our heart. Um, I really look at the HR function as kind of the employee life cycle. And, you know, what does that mean? From the very beginning, we help recruit and attract our employees. So understanding the businesses, we have 18 different departments that we support as a, as a department. And understanding their roles and their responsibilities helps us to help them recruit and be that voice of the team out in the community uh, as an employer. We want to be an employer of choice. And I think in the last several years, we've done a really nice job at really uh, raising the bar, if you will, in terms of how we recruit uh, and, and select our, our employees. So really, we, we get them on board. Our onboarding process is very good. We include uh, our management team in that process, making sure that the employees are welcome and understand our policies, our procedures, and what the county is all about. Uh, once they're onboarded, uh, the management team really has a big responsibility to ensure that ongoing training and support of that individual is maintained and that we continue to engage our employees and make them feel engaged and part of the team. Uh, so with that, we continue through that employee life cycle to provide professional development training for our management team and to the ability that we can provide ongoing training for employees as well. Uh, from there, we make sure that we build a, a performance management program so as the employee is developing in their position, we can provide feedback and really performance management is ongoing feedback uh, throughout the year to let employees know the great things that they're doing in their position, but also some areas perhaps and discussions where we can coach them to success. So uh, it's, it's from that hiring, it's the performance management, and certainly then uh, bringing them on board. They may look at other opportunities within the county, so we talk about succession planning. Uh, and within the HR role, with embedded all of that, we've got some great programs. Uh, we take care of uh, the employee benefits program, the administration, the plan design. Uh, we look at wellness programs, safety initiatives, uh, and so forth. So uh, lots of things happening in HR, and really we put, make people a priority within our department. And I don't know how much we talked about this four years ago when you started, but when I reflect back on your role as HR director and you've built this team and these new employees and, you know, you used to work at a bank, you worked at Blue Harbor at one point and you, you had this outstanding HR background when you came aboard, but how often do you go to an organization that has 19 different departments ranging from law enforcement, health and human services, a nursing home, planning, I, I mean it's from A to Z and I have to imagine when you come on as an HR director and have that breadth of responsibility and need to help recruit employees, it's got to take a little while to get a feel for the organization. 
It did, and I recall one of my peer managers saying to me after I was here a year, he said, I said, you know, I've got this, and he said, oh, goodness, I think it's going to take a little longer. So having been here now four years, Adam, to your point, uh, it was definitely eye-opening for me. I had to learn to take time, respect the knowledge, you know, and, and every activity that was going in and around me among my peers, and the more that you sit and you listen, and that's really... Um, a very important uh, management uh, practice, uh, you learn a lot by just being a good listener. And I think that that was parallel in my banking career. I traveled to 22 banking locations and, and was that HR role. Uh, and then at Blue Harbor, there were 12 departments. So jumping to 18 really almost doubled, doubled my size. And so it really is learning and respecting your peers' roles and uh, learning how to work well together. So big picture, we have about 825 employees here working in 19 departments administering about 200 programs and services. How many staff do you have to support this organization and what's your <coughs> HR department budget? Right. Our budget is just short of 600000 uh, and most of that is comprised of you know, salary and benefits, and then we have consulting and, and some benefit pieces embedded within. Our staff is currently at six employees. We've got four full-time and two part-time that actually do a nice job share. Uh, so currently at six, and I think uh, when I look at our, we've got an HR manager, Penny Elsner, who does a phenomenal job. She's been here over 30 years, and we value her. Uh, her, her tenure and her experience and knowledge. Marsha Schreiber joined us uh, just about six months ago, and Marsha is our senior uh, generalist and really provides an outstanding background in benefits employee wellness. Uh, we have Michelle Reynas as an HR generalist, and Michelle has been with us just over two years now. And Michelle, again, brings 15 years of HR experience and actually has a county administration degree, uh, so understood government as she also joined us. And then we have Courtney Ames and Alyssa Woltring as our front desk HR coordinators. They job share and they do a phenomenal job for us. They are our meet and greet at our front desk in HR uh, and really make good things happen for us every day with our employees. When Jean started, and, and Tom certainly remembers this, Act 10 was uh, being right. introduced, and we had at that time, I think, seven or eight bargaining units. As I mentioned, we have about 825 employees. How many bargaining units do we have now, and what's really changed since Act 10? Right, I think since Act 10, uh, we had the majority of our employees really governed under union contracts. Uh, so their wages, their work rules, and so forth, and their benefits were able to be bargained each, each year, however long that contract was for. Uh, post Act 10, which I believe was in 2011, uh, the majority of those contracts went away. We went from eight to two. Uh, and in the last year here in 2016, our health care center Rocky Knoll contract came to an end as December 31st. So we had a transition there with some of our employees. So currently we have one union contract remaining, uh, and that is uh, in our sheriff's department for our deputies and detectives, WPPA, and uh, there's about 55 employees currently covered under that contract. What, do you, what would you look upon as an example of two of the biggest change? I, I know that you took the lead in rewriting our mm -hmm. policy and procedures. Right. Uh, what, what do you see as being you know, one of the biggest changes as a result of that and how we interact with our employees and the, and the teamwork we have here? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great question. And I think coming from private sector to public sector, uh, the union contracts were, were something new for me. So I had to learn a lot at a, at a rapid pace. And um, I come from an open door policy. Every employee's uh, opinion and matter counts. We encourage and we embrace feedback. And so that was not new to me. So what was new to me is, is understanding that this culture, um, the majority did not necessarily feel that perhaps about our leadership and management team. So when you talk about culture change, a way of life change, we had to um, understand that our employees perhaps didn't trust all of those practices. Practices. So uh, it was some training within our policies. We had to develop and establish um, you know, performance review training. We had to make sure that our employees knew we wanted to listen and that we valued mostly their opinions in general. And I think you've done a tremendous job with that transition. Uh, there was angst, and whether you supported Act 10 or not, it created some real change in our organization, and I think a credit to our management team, all of our department heads, and particularly the HR department. That transition went about as smooth as it could. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that we treat employees the same whether they're in a contract or not. We all care for one another. We respect one another. We all have important roles and responsibilities, and you helped 
I think, establish a, a better understanding that that's the case. That's how we operate here. Mm -hmm. um, pay for performance. You talked about, you know, that was a change of late. What is pay for performance? How, what changed as a result of that? Sure. Again, kind of dating back to the, the contract culture and that time and a place, uh, n most of our employers were not reviewed their performance on an annual basis. We had those outside of the union contracts that were, so that practice was in place, and we appreciate you know, certainly strong performance and recognize that at the time. However, we had the majority of our employees now moving to that culture. So slowly and in the last few years, we reintroduced the performance evaluation plan. Again, in that uh, respect, we engaged employees, and we, we had them take a look at the form. We went to our management team. Does this still work for us? What makes sense today? How should we measure performance? across such a vast organization and be consistent and fair in its application. So that was really quite neat. The, the form was put together. We rolled it out to our employees. And really what pay for performance does, the contracts uh, in the past would say at six months perhaps at, at annually and thereafter, every single person would have the same increase at those particular intervals. And performance management was not part of that measurement. It was an automatic increase. Today, pay for performance with those union contracts going away, and this is typically some of certainly private sector practices as well, is that it does matter that your performance is either meets standard, below standard, or really even above standard, and that we want to recognize your good works as a county. So it provides an opportunity for employees to be motivated in their own work performance, to want to do really well, because their performance ties directly to their paycheck and their annual potential annual increase every year. So if we feel that our employees are more motivated to do a better job, the end result is that an organization will be much more successful. Some of our viewers might be wondering, well, just how broad is this pay for performance threshold? And it's rather modest. It's a one to three percent increase. And you only get the one percent if you're meeting minimum expectations. So it's possible some employees may not receive an increase at all, though the vast majority of our employees do an excellent job and receive at least a one percent. I can go up to three. We don't see that very often because that's really at the high end of the of the uh, scale. But we may see around a two percent on average this year. And the feedback we would give some employees I know who were who were threatened by that is, do you really want to make the same amount as the person sitting right next to you that may not be doing? the level of work you're doing or as dedicated as you are, putting in the time you are. Uh, this, so this allows managers to truly reward employees that are going above and beyond. So final question before I turn it over to Tom, what do we do to help make sure our management team was skilled to appropriately apply this tool? Because of course that created some angst as well. Does my direct supervisor really objectively apply this tool to make sure that we are in fact rewarding the best and the brightest and giving you know perhaps just a minimal increase to those who are just doing enough to continue mm -hmm. That did take some work. I think as, as any new initiative, uh, we had some managers who embraced this and who were very people savvy and leadership and management savvy. So they were able to understand the review and the process very quickly. For those that did not, and even those that did, we invited them in several years in a row now to performance management training. So we walked through what is this evaluation? What is your role? What is the employee's role? Uh, one of the things that we do, Adam, is we do a self-evaluation process where we ask the employee about a month ahead of the annual due date um, to, to really rate themselves and put together all of the good works, all of their accomplishments for the year, all of their achievements, and provide that to their manager ahead of time. This provides our leadership team to get a good sense of where that employee feels they're at. They have the opportunity to review that, perhaps tweak it, and then have a very meaningful discussion at that annual review process and not going in not knowing what that employee is thinking. So a lot of coaching on, on that whole process. Employees and managers on the onset were very um, nervous nervous about that and there was some pushback. But now that we're into this a couple of years, it's coming natural and I can see some very good progression and growth. So we ongoing are coaching and developing our leaders and managers on how to deliver a successful performance review. In conjunction with that, it's not just that annual review that's important. That's a one-time formal sit down with your employees. 
my hope is that we continue to encourage our leadership team to sit down, whether that's quarterly, semi-annual, check those goals, how are we doing, have ongoing good conversations. Some of those conversations may not be positive. We may have to give performance feedback in coaching, but the point is ongoing, consistent, uh, and meaningful conversations with our employees. Nice overview. Thank you, Gene. Tom. Thank you, Adam. Hi, Gene. Uh, nice you could be here. Um, it, when you were speaking, it, it made me think of um, your department is one of those departments that really reaches out into all the different departments. It, it's not necessarily a question, more of an observation, right? I mean, you, you obviously work with every department there is within the county, and not every department can say that, I would assume. Right. Yeah. Right. Just getting back to your uh, benefit safety and wellness, which I think you're, you're, you're responsible for, um, and you've got some overall safety programs that you're doing with employees now. Uh, what, what, what has the safety committee been working on this past year, and kind of what is your focus going forward? Yes, the past few years we've really picked up the safety initiative here at the county, and we continue to listen to our employees and ask them what their needs are. Uh, so in 2016 specifically, first of all, our safety committee meets quarterly, and it is comprised of employees and perhaps some management throughout the county. So again, a voice of the team, we want to know what's going on out there. Uh, so in 2016, our uh, focus was really uh, driven by kind of society, if you will, what's going on in the world today, and it's really active threats. And that can mean many things. That can mean at home, at work, at the grocery store. Are we prepared? And what can we do uh, with our employees to help them be more proactive with their safety? Not only theirs, but if we have guests in our building. Are we providing a safe environment for them to come and, and do business? So uh, this year we provided, through the help of our sheriff's department, craze training, which is civilian response to active shooter training. Uh, and our sheriff's department, I can't speak highly enough of their team that has come in and they did a two and a half hour training session for our entire management team. And it's all on proactive, being ready and thinking before a situation happens, if we're ready, do we have the tools and resources we need to react uh, when something may happen. Um, and so we also videotaped that recording and put it on our share drive so all employees could view that. The expectation was all employees received craze training in 2016. Following that, we felt it was necessary to not only train them on a video, but we did all department walkthroughs, and it was led by myself, Michelle Rainitz, and the HR team, uh, Steve Steinert, who's our emergency management coordinator, as well as our uh, building services manager. So we went to each county location, and we did a walkthrough. Where are your exits? Where are your entrances? What doors are alarmed? Do you have a notification system in your building in the event we have any type of emergency, weather related and, or other crisis? So uh, that was an eye opener. So we walked through with department heads. We asked them what their needs were. I think everybody learned a lot in those walkthroughs. Following that then, in fall, just a few months ago, we actually were afforded the opportunity of once again through our, our sheriff's department to do active threat drills. Um, what did that mean? It meant that we had uniformed sheriff department deputies come into our locations and we informed our employees. They knew of the situation. They knew that if they didn't feel they could personally handle it, they could be excused from this drill. But we actually had the sheriff's department fire blanks and go through the buildings, rattle doors. What was the, the purpose of the training was to apply what we learned in the craze training. There's, you either run if you can or you hide. Right? There's also a fight mechanism. We didn't really want to necessarily train too much on that, uh, but uh, it was, it was eye-opening. So we've uh, had those drills at our Health and Human Services building, our administration building, our courthouse, and our annex um, so far. And so moving forward in the next few weeks, we'll be at Rocky Knoll. Uh, we will be at the ADRC, the Job Center, and the Highway Department doing those same drills. We then did what I applaud Sheboygan County for is we reached out to the employees via a survey monkey following those drills to say what did we do well, what went well, what do we need, what didn't we think about. And I can tell you that 99% of the feedback, uh, nearly 100% of the feedback was all positive. It was uh, appreciative and they wish we could do those drills more often. So a lot of active threat drill plan planning uh, this last year and we'll finish that up you know, this year. Going back though to 2016, one other major initiative I don't want to fail to mention was we were asked through all of the things that are happening in the world today to take a look at our courthouse security. 
and not knowing when, nobody knows when or where something may or may not happen, uh, but the, the opportunity certainly would present ourselves based on the, the, the business, the good things we do over there. So uh, we did just that. We had a committee based on Adam's direction put together to really focus on that. We looked at several other counties and what they were currently doing um, and looked at some practices and had a report uh, to Adam on both findings and recommendations as of June 1st this past year. The good news is Adam reviewed that report, worked with yourself and the county board members, and we now are approved to move forward with a number of initiatives to further secure our courthouse with the primary uh, really responsibility now on our table to make a one secured entrance. Um, so that will be a change for our employees and our public. And, and bottom line, again, we surveyed the employees over there. They asked for this. 90, over 90% 90 of the employees said they feel uncomfortable, that there's a, a possibility of something happening, and they would appreciate these efforts. So good news and good work's happening moving forward. And I want to thank and acknowledge Tom's leadership on this because he knows that many other courthouses do have a secured entrance. Uh, we've been fortunate that we haven't had an incident, but... Right. I think it was an appropriate thing to plan for and of course your committee did a wonderful job and Tom and the county board ultimately had to approve it and, and I, I want to acknowledge Tom because he, he knew it was important and we built it into the five-year plan and it's not an inexpensive remodel but it's one that's going to further protect not, our, not only our employees but our, our guests as you said. Right. Well thank you. As always it was a team effort with a lot of people especially uh, from Gene's staff and just across the, the county, in particular in the courthouse. I think it was a, a job well, well done by a, a great group of people. Um, following up a little bit on employee benefits, it's a component of your annual budget always, which is always a big deal. It's the biggest document that a county board certainly votes on. That's your that's our blueprint for the year, if you will. Um, any of the, Could you share any trends that are involved relative to employee benefits, et cetera, with the county? Sure. First of all, that, that employee benefit budget this for 2017 is just over $13 million, so it puts it in perspective on, on, on what kind of numbers we're dealing with. So annually, Tom, we have a strategic benefit planning committee that we put together, and we work the first quarter of each year to review where are we at. We, we take, take a look at the previous year. So in the next few weeks, we'll be meeting on kind of the plan year 2016, what worked, what didn't, where are our claims, where are our risks, you know, what does the future look like. We work very closely hand-in-hand -hand with uh, Jay Scott, our benefit consultant, um, and in addition, uh, this year, in 2016, we joined uh, really a partnership with Wisconsin Counties Association Group Health Trust, and they now administer both the claims and the funding as well as our in-health clinic. So we're very pleased with that partnership. We have, you know, more, more folks at the table making good decisions. And really that annual planning process is that group, our Strategic Benefit Committee, our Benefit Consultant, and, and WCAGHT together saying, what's our claims experience? Experience, what is trending, uh, what are our employee needs, and how do we balance that with the taxpayer? Mm -hmm. So in the last couple of years, what we have done um, is made some changes, both in, you know, from the premium standpoint with our employees, but also plan design change. And uh, the last couple of years, we have uh, realized between three and four hundred thousand dollars in savings to the county with the changes that we put forward. In addition, with the change moving to WCGHT, we preserved our health care reserves at the tune of over 900000 So very good move. I'm very pleased with that relationship. They're managing our claims, our employees. I think it was a change, but very much appreciate uh, working with them as well. Yeah. And, of course, prior to that, we had been self-insured and right. moving in, so it was a change. Uh, right now, what do the employees pay towards their health insurance and the pension costs? Right, health insurance is between 15 and 20 percent. 15 percent of our employees are participate in our health risk assessment, an annual kind of biometric review of their health, managed through our in-health clinic confidentially. 17 and a half percent of our employees decide that's not something that they choose to do, and 20 percent for our contract, our WPPA employees, if they choose not to do uh, the health risk assessment as well. So a little bit of a variance there. In terms of WRS, our, our pension, uh, our employees are paying 6.8% in 2017. And then certainly the county puts a 6.8% for the regular employees, but for our contract employees, it's that 10.9%. Right, and that, that came out of Act 10, those right. two, those two right. situations. Do um, you have time, Adam, or do you want me to go on with another question? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, how does the county enjoy, engage employees? I know you've talked a little, a little bit about and, uh, the employee benefits 
safety and wellness. You have right. talked a little bit about, but yeah. feel free to. In short, I think in both, of, in all of those cases, Tom, uh, we have committees. So we have a strategic benefit committee I talked about, engaging those employees to be voice of the team. We have our, our uh, safety committee that meets quarterly, again, asking the employees what their needs are, introducing new initiatives. And then the same thing with wellness. And wellness, I think, is really a, a neat initiative in the last few years. Employees owning their own health, educating employees. And really, I look at mind, body, and soul when I talk about uh, wellness. Um, and really what that means is we're doing a number of challenges with our employees throughout the year, whether it's a weight loss challenge or an exercise challenge and so forth. This last year we did a, a mental health challenge, and I'm really proud of it. Uh, it was a new concept, and it was called a time of thanks and a time for giving. And it was right around our Thanksgiving time, and we worked with United Way, and we basically had three agencies that our employees were able to, the agencies identified their needs, and our employees were able to give back to those agencies. Uh, so it was really quite moving for us to think about wellness in that light as well. And certainly the other initiative with wellness is our in-health clinic, making sure that, that we um, take advantage of that. And, and quite frankly, our in-health clinic, as we look at our ROI on our in-health clinic for the last couple of years, it's been, again, between three and four hundred thousand dollars a year that we can show some hard cost, some soft cost, an estimate that we are saving the county by having that in-health clinic. And it's a great, um, really, partnership between the Sheboygan Area School District and the city of Sheboygan. I'm going to end there, but I just wanted to say thank you, and thank you to your staff. Anytime I need some information from uh, either you in particular, your staff usually I'm dealing with, it's always quickly uh, gotten to me and uh, very accurately, and I appreciate that very much. Thank because you, that's, you can't make good decisions if you don't have good information, so right. that's very important. So thank them for me. We only have a minute left, and with approximately 825 employees, the breadth of role and responsibilities in the county, we always want to recruit and retain the best people we can. Of course, people retire, people move on to other opportunities. If someone is looking for a job in planning or at our highway department or at the sheriff's department, and we have a website with all these departments listed, what's their best way to, to reach out and see what's available with job openings? Right. So real quickly, we'd love to have you come visit us. The Human Resources Office is at 508 New York Avenue in Sheboygan. We accept applications in person. Rocky Knoll, our healthcare center, accepts applications, and so does our sheriff's department. So in person always works. Uh, online, uh, I am happy to say that this year we've put together a really nice Facebook uh, page. So, it, so uh, join us and like us on Facebook. LinkedIn, we're fully up and running, which has been a very effective tool for us. Uh, the Job Center of Wisconsin constantly has our rolling updated and our website, Sheboygan honey.com. So lots of ways to find out about our great opportunities here. Excellent. Wonderful overview. Thank you so much, Jean. Thank you. Good to be here. And thank you for joining us. If you want to learn more about our uh, human resources department or had some questions about something that Jean shared, please don't hesitate to contact the, the office or stop on in, as you said. And again, thank you for your role and your support in the community. We've got such a good thing happening here with Sheboygan County. A lot of good people making good things happen. And Jean and her staff certainly are a big part of that. So thank you for being here. Next month, Chris Lewinsky, our IT director, is going to be here. And speaking of collaboration and partnerships, the city of Sheboygan, school district, and county just put in a ring of fiber to enhance our IT connections and reliability. So Chris is going to talk about that and other IT advancements. And until then, thanks for joining us. Drive safely, and we'll see you soon.